welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And Halloween Horror Month has begun. It has finally. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> Fuck that Christmas tree. Oh, what a sight. This is Michael Myers. This is Jason Myers. Go fucking kill Lori. Dark of night, Mike. Dark of stealth, Mike. Bask in the goddamn Halloween glory, guys, because it's re-Halloween Halloween. We're doing all the Halloween reviews. We're going to do Halloween skits. We've got uh, horror profiles that are focused on just Halloween. All this leading up to the greatness that be at Halloween 2000, 2018. Um, I heard there's a movie coming out this year. It's a big deal, Jim. Oh, it is. <laughs> this entire month is just going to be just shoved full of Halloween. Or we're going to shove it right in your face and your butt. Yeah. I mean, your face. Yeah. Your butt if you want it. I mean, change the station if you want. Dirty holes. <laughs> So, uh, Halloween, the 1974 classic. <laughs> 1964, stupid. No, 1978. Uh, the great classic John Carpenter film that introduced the world to Michael Myers as well as Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode and also sets along the pantheon of Psycho as maybe top two greatest horror movies, serial killers ever of all time. I mean, you can have Jason, that's great, Love but I'm not talking about some piece of poopy fucking asshole that wears a hockey mask that lives on the bottom of the ocean has a mommy issue. Ah, you can feel it, dude! I'm talking about Michael Myers that has a Captain Kirk obsession. Kind of that is the erection of my selection and my affection. I'm gonna put my dick in. I'm gonna put my dick in. Michael Myers' sister. Um, is she's trying to get her some dick. <laughs> she's, 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 it's Halloween night. She's there with her boyfriend and they're heavy petting and they go upstairs. What I always noticed about this scene though is by the way, when he comes downstairs, you can see her be like, call me. And he's like, yeah, whatever. Fun fact though, the guy who plays uh, the dude who uh, bangs Michael Myers' sister right before her death, mm -hmm. He uh, left acting and became this this huge hardcore like religious dude who wrote books and all this stuff. One of his books was about staying away from the dangers of sex. Ah. The, the, the shot's amazing. It's a tracking shot. It's classic. And, and you always see the shot of like the eyes, like when he puts on the mask and it's like walking around with him. John Carpenter was talking in an interview just recently and he said, I, the guy was like, how'd you do that? He's like, well, we put it in in post. He's like, no, but how'd you do it? He's like, we put it in fucking post. It was in post production. Can I get a bagel? What the <laughs> fuck? Who is this asshole? Which we've actually filmed that way before only we're so we stupid. actually did it we put the mask over the camera and did the, wait, the wait, shot that don't way. reveal our secrets oh God. that is our post <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, post. John, yeah that's pretty much what we use you yeah for your knees michael god damn you michael maybe your belly hurts michael he did say, however, in that tracking shot, the very beginning of the movie, which is iconic, and everybody loves that scene, which is, there's a reason why, he did say there was a tiny cut, and most people will never find it, and actually, you probably never will find it. He said they buried it so deep in your mom's ass, only your dad can get it out. He goes upstairs, his, his sister's brushing her hair with her titties out, and he, he, he slashes his first titties. You know, he kills his sister, so I walk in there, and my brother's making out with my own brother. Like father, like son. That's what I'll say, it's fucked up. You know, you know what they say? say. Man, like father, like son. You said it best, brother. And uh, and not only that, it, it's deep. Like he's a little yeah. kid. Like he's six years old. And he's like, you can hear that shit ch chunking down. And I was always thinking, as watching it when I was a kid, I was like, that's a lot of strength. He went downstairs. He goes down. You know, he goes outside. And it's like I think it's like it always felt funny to me because he like runs outside all of a sudden after he kills the sister, and the parents pull up and they're like Michael. But it's like after you did something really bad, like you spilled bean dip on the carpet, you're like. <laughs> And you start running down the stairs and you get caught. You're like, oh, fuck, because you don't know what you're doing in that moment. You're like, shit, I've been caught. And yeah, so and then, you know, he's just standing there like, oh, but it's, 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 it. it's the birth of like him being the shape itself because yeah. when his parents show up, they're like, Michael, <laughs> like what the, what the fuck is going on? He doesn't say anything. He just stands there. He holds the knife. Like there's no reason for this. It's a pure, just mental fucking snap. It's fate. And I think, and we'll get into this in a little bit later when we talk about Lori, but I think that the, the, the whole idea behind the new poster that they put out for Halloween 2018 is like, you can't escape your fate or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's something about fate. Um, is, is this. I mean, it's just fate. Like, something inside of him snapped. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. It's not because uh, he had a shitty trailer upbringing. It's scarier because there's no fucking reason for it. This middle America suburban kid just fucking snapped. Well, it's everyday it America. It's in the middle of the nicest suburban area you could possibly think of. It looks really iconic and, and not iconic, just idealistic to raise a family in. And this little boy, for no fucking reason, wearing a clown costume, decides to go, you know, shave his sister's titties a little bit with a knife. Poopoo -poo caca ha, -ha. It, It's the story of the century. This is what 
you get for not cleaning up your Legos? I don't care! The shot that pulls out uh, as Michael Myers' little boy, Michael Myers, is standing there, he always, he kind of moved the knife a little bit to catch the light. I don't know if that was like something in production that they had, or directing that he told him to, to move it a little bit to catch that light, but it's always cool to see that gleam come off the knife. Like, you motherfuckers have no idea. I just downed three gallons of Mountain Dew. <laughs> and that's going to do <laughs> me over. I'm going to come at you like a spider or, monkey chip. I'll fucking kill you. You guys well, ever seen Saving Swimming where that little raccoon goes, mm, at his face? <laughs> that's what's happening inside of his body. I know. Uh, but no, by the way, I, I had to pull this up because I want to remember David Kyle is the guy who played the boyfriend who has sex with Michael Myers sister right before she dies. He escaped with his life unlike he did in Rob Zombie's version. But this guy is literally a doctor. Dr. David Kyle Foster of the Trinity Evang Evangelical Divinity School is the author of Sexual Healing, a biblical guide to finding freedom from sexual sin and brokenness. I don't even How need How fucking weird is that? I don't need him to tell me shit because all I gotta do is know that I was married and now I'm not. <laughs> and also I can just listen to that Sexual Healing song by whatever his name was, Marvin Gaye. And we'll get Loomis driving into the night with a, with a nurse who smokes a lot, sir smoke a lot, and she's she has no idea. She's, she just wants to get to her fucking Halloween party, right? She wants to get to wherever she's going and they pull up in the classic scene. They're all standing outside in their fucking white coats, which is a creepy idea to begin with, and it's all shot on such well, a low budget. Well, she was stupid though. She was like, "When did they start letting them wander around?" It's like, "Go on, Paul." Like, I mean, it was like obviously they never let anybody. They, you would never. No facility in the world is going to let their inmates wander around in a dark, stormy night. Like, so why would you even say, "When did they start letting them roam around?" Like, well, she asked a genuine question, but Doctor Loomis being there, it's like, "Go on, go." It's like, <laughs> it's like I like you know, I think that it also showed that they're Dr. running a night landscaping company to pay the hospital bills. That's a good idea. Donald Pleasance also, as playing Dr. Loomis, is already showing, you know, what Dr. Loomis is already about in those first few minutes. Like, he's very short, very to the point. He's not very good on social skills with other people. He's basically John Carpenter today. Yeah, every day. <laughs> and uh, that's just me at work. But yeah, you get to you get to see Michael Myers for the first time, and he, he fucking does parkour hardcore, parkour hardcore. He he Spider Man the fuck up out of that. Yeah. It, it, is, it is dressed at all. I just I always wanted to like zoom it in and be like, is uh, was it uh, Scream? Was the movie where they're like, hey, you want to watch all the right movies? If you pause it at just the right time, you can see Tom Cruise's penis. Like, I wanted them to do that for Michael Myers. Michael but. Myers's penis has a little picture of a mask on the tip of it. <laughs> uh, no wonder he's pissed. His fucking pee hole's closed off. <laughs> and you get the scary moment of him. An awesome scene. He breaks the glass and she freaks the fuck out uh, he was there. what the fuck oh shit no way bro hey shit i don't have insurance right now okay we're gonna get out hey big phil what are you doing bro come on now Look, i can get you better chicken than that oh shit all right well you know that's yours this fucking job sucks and then you've got Loomis just trying to talk everybody into the fact, like, seriously, this motherfucker stared at a wall for 15 goddamn years. And I've, we've always talked about this a hundred times. That's like me staring at a, a test question I didn't study for. <laughs> like, what the fuck is the answer? <laughs> did he Did he eat? Did he poop? He, he did. He, he obviously did, he because to. they would have had National Geographic in there being like, this man hasn't shat in three months. I think, uh, yeah, and if, when he does finally poop, it sounds like rocks hitting a <laughs> it's fucking... It's going to be like everybody waiting for a panda to have its baby. Well, I mean, I think there's that, a live camera on If you want to get Michael technical Myers. about it, I'm sure that they they you know fed him like Gerber baby food or something he would swallow just like a body would would re natural react but yeah as far as did he poop as I mean, he had to possible. poop and they probably bedpanned him yeah as little as possible yeah. well he probably got up and went to the bathroom no there. right well, down he just sat well, there. so he just uh, but he's, he's, he sat it, up like is he as is he as calm uh, is he as calm when he's taking a shit even a painful one as he is when he's <laughs> killing these like <laughs> and you, hear, you hear no I mean you hear this and he's like. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't like. He doesn't make a sound. I mean, if you ever got, if you ever wanted to hear Michael Myers ever make a sound that wasn't Rob Zombie, just show him taking a painful shit. He would go. Ugh. You you do get a cut of Doctor Loomis, you know, yelling at the, uh, the the staff members and the and the head doctor, I guess, of the hospital. And Doctor Wynn for the first time. And then the original is played by Robert Fallon rather than the, the guy he's played by in yeah. the uh, Halloween Six. And basically what he's telling him is like, you know, an all points bulletin and two roadblocks wouldn't stop a five year old. Now that might be true. I mean, it's a great I, mean line. I would run from it as well. But you doing well last night. Maybe somewhere I'm getting lessons. <laughs> and he I was like, damn, but then he gets in the car and speeds off GTA style. I was like, now I've got to go to Haddonfield. Uh, that again, it just solidifies the not the pure obsession that Loomis has yet. 
but at least it sets up that this is some like badass motherfucker that just broke out of Debo is back. And it, and it backs it backs off of the scene of the way he was with the nurse, just how antisocial and weird Dr. Loomis is, just like in his reactions with this guy. He's so short and pissed off and he seems crazy. Nobody understands him. And that just really sets the tone for his character. And it's just great lines yeah. that they have in those scenes. Just a good actor. And then a, lot, a guy a lot of people forget in Loomis's travels on the way back, he, he, he stops and finds the truck with the, the rabbit and red lounge or what's yeah, the name it's, of the it's the, ra it's the uh, red rabbit red lounge rabbit, or whatever it is, um, which Rob Zombie used as a nasty strip club showing it. Of course showing, it is. Yeah, that's what he does. Here's, I'm going to I'm gonna put a gold star next to every good moment to show my wife's ass because I'm a fucking cuck. She has a nice um, <laughs> But we keep talking about Rob Zombie. I can't, I just, Well, he infected it. It goes there. He infected um, it like umbrella. You know, and that's what people worry about with remakes, I guess. It's like, I don't want people thinking about that goddamn bearded bastard when we talk about Halloween. But um, yeah, and it's a great scene. A lot of people forget that that's Michael's first kill post-asylum. Yeah, you know when he gets out, but he finds he doesn't find the body there. Like it's like two feet away in the fucking bushes, and Lewis is just like, I've got to poop. <laughs> I gotta go. And Time is a waste thing. <laughs> okay, but when you get to Haddonfield, what you find when you're introduced to Laurie Strode. When you're introduced to Jamie Lee Curtis for the first time and her group of friends, you find a very idyllic uh, town that has forgotten what had transpired years earlier, except for the Myers house, which they all feel is haunted, and that's that's about it. It's a spooky, ghostly house that nobody goes near. Some of them don't know the story behind it. It's just a house you stay away from. Lori Strode, her family, they work in real uh, realty or realtor real estate. Real estate, whatever. They work in real estate, and uh, so she's involved, and she has to drop the key off or whatever. After Michael, you do see, for the first time, Michael with the, uh, when she drops the mail off or whatever at the uh, door, he goes, Ooh, and he pops up, he's like, who been dropping mail? And you know, I feel, always feel like when he pops up in that scene, it's like, how, how, how late am I on my payments? Like, I know I haven't made my fucking Time Warner payments, but did they show my cable? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, we, everybody's talking about with Halloween 2018, if they're not brother and sister, and they cut that time off, like, everyone's like, well, why then did Michael become so obsessed with killing her? Why did he follow her around so much in the first one? Because she had a key to his fucking house, and he couldn't find where the, well, I, can't, I don't have money to get a new he copy. He had a fucking itinerary when he got it. I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta drive by the school, scare some kids, but that's just gonna be uh, appetizing. I'm then gonna go home. I'm gonna take a rest. I'm gonna maybe get a dog because I'm hungry. I'm gonna eat that shit up. Uh, and go show that at Burger King with a croissant. <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, you know what? He's like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. He gets up. He puts on his overalls and he's like, first person I see, it's like can't hardly wait. It's like first person I see, I'm gonna fuck him. He's like, first person I see, I'm gonna fucking kill him. And he wakes up and he's on his way out the door. And then Lori shows up at the door to drop a fucking key off. And he's like. Fuck that was fast. He's like, he's like one. He's like Seth Green. He's like, who will be the lucky one? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Hey, yo, Kareem, baby, what's up? Uh, but well, it could be um, because his mind is is so psychotic the way that it is. It would be like. Uh, just immediate lock on to the first person he sees that drew his interest. Maybe the fact that she had the keys to his house or something had some kind of connective feel to him. And I don't know, it was just like, you touch my house, you fucking die. Okay, I told you to stay off the lawn a hundred times, you didn't listen, now you got a lawnmower blade coming at your ass. Also, the fact is, I never did understand uh, you, you know, after all these years, and I would be one to ask John Carpenter, why in the fuck was he even at the school to begin with? Like, what was the purpose of, of following around little Tommy? In, I have fucking like, said he, this. Because he does this, like, he does this thing where, like, he, like, is doing, like, a music video from 1981. He's, like, he runs his finger along the chain link as he's watching him, and he's like, I won't do anything at all. Well, it's like <laughs> a fucking, uh, I, you know, I, I would walk 500 miles to come on the Proclaimers. <laughs> well, I wake up. Well, That's I know. A, and, more well, of a Smash Bros. push video because you know when he's bending on the bin, the barbed wire. That's what I. That's well, because I was it's not even like the fact that he was driving. If he had been just driving by and this scene happens or whatever, it's one thing. But the fact that he literally got out of the car to go over and go, yes, this used to be my school, but they've changed <laughs> things. Still smells like crayons. The seesaw was over there. <laughs> but yeah, it's like why was he was he like just remembering his childhood or whatever part of him that was left that was human. And two, he goes back and he writes Sam Hand on the wall. So he had this weird fixation. Well, I, with school. I, I think it was well. I I'm only thinking Solid. that maybe it has something to do with a leftover part of him that was human, that was just reacting. It was no longer like he consciously did it. Maybe a subconscious thought was to go back to school. 
I want to point out, um, we haven't really talked about her much. Uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis did a phenomenal job uh, playing the teenager babysitter chick that she was playing. Also smart, but resilient, kind of the strong lady that she was portraying in the movie. She was so nervous. Like, she was literally would get a call from John Carpenter and think, okay, I'm fired because I sucked. Like, I have right. no idea how good I am at this or what's going on. And I think you can really pick up on that because her character's supposed to be nervous. And, and John Carpenter casted really well. It was a genius part of casting on him. I think he knew that about her, which is why he put her in that timid role. Because in the same way, uh, the girl who plays Annie, uh, Nancy Keys, she's like, I'm a really sarcastic person, so he would purposely cast me in these roles to help with my comfort level. Uh, so I think he was really smart in doing that, and I think it showed him. It was really authentic what you got from Jamie Lee Curtis. But something fun that, that I want to mention that I don't think people pick up on a lot, especially with Scream, when they would mention like the rules of scary movies and stuff like that. Like, you can't fuck, you can't do drugs, you can't do all this stuff like that. Um, and, and a lot of that's based off of Halloween, but Lori smokes weed. In Halloween, she did smoke. She weed. smoked that fucking ganja. Yeah, but it was. It, I car. bet it wasn't ganja. It was oregano. Some people are gonna watch this for the first time and find it slow or whatever because Michael like slowly creeps up on the distance. Well, that's the whole idea. It, 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 it creates the atmosphere that it needs to create. It's not a long movie right. by any stretch of the imagination, yeah. but it's just the right amount of runtime with what John Carpenter was doing to build the atmosphere, to build the tension level, to get you kind of maybe. Uh, Finding yourself relating to these characters, these these high school kids or whatever, and feeling like, okay, this is what high school America is all about, and then having this creature and always in the peripheral stalking, and you know it's coming, like a fucking shark in water. And someone someone said it best when they they were like, when he finally shows, when he finally fucking kills Annie in that car, like he he's getting closer and closer. He's on the outskirts, he's in the car, he's around the corner, he's watching from his window, he's in the right, house he, at times. Every shot, every people. shot, he's closer. When he now. finally kills somebody for the first time, it's almost a release of. Tension. And he's only doing that because her breath stinks. <laughs> uh, well, no, I, like, he's been watching her for a while. Yeah, and, like point, he though. did. Like he he watched her make fucking popcorn, take her shirt off. He might have got a boner. We don't know. And then he follows her into her car. And like, <coughs> like he knew she was gonna get in that car. Well, he heard the phone conversation. I'm sure. And then he does this thing when he like kills her though. And he was like, <laughs> I mean, that's a, you can hear him breathe. Yeah, I know. And he was trying. He was like, bitch. How fucking strong is your neck bones? Because I think he was trying to snap it, but he was choking the shit. I was like, I'm gonna choke the shit out you. And uh, finally, she does die. You hear the the horn or whatever, and you get the stab too. The, the final. The, oh the yeah, final, that's like, right. That big yeah. thunk. Yeah. And was, the music's great. And I, of course, I have to mention the music real quick throughout the movie. Is I fucking it's iconic as shit. It's right. the Halloween music. I mean, what can you say about it? It was goddamn genius. It's a godsend. It's just it's genius. A godsend. Like, you can't fucking recreate that. It's just it's. I don't want to say it's luck. But it's part talent, it's part knowing what you got, it's part not giving a fuck or trying too hard, which he didn't. He's like, it's just the fucking bongos time or whatever. I think it's the, I, I think it's I think you can say luck because it's lucky that it came out at the right time and for, it, the, at the, for the right audience. You know, it, and it fits it, so well. If it had come out in the you know, 60s or maybe late 80s, it might have got lost. I'll say it's mostly genius just because John Carpenter's done so many great scores, but it's genius, talent, and a little bit of luck. It's just perfect, man. You gotta love the score. Yeah. things about this movie to me the backbone like when people look at well, who is Michael Myers what's the true origin like what is he is he immortal is he all this shit like that which they don't really get into until the second one um, is and I've talked about this a hundred times over again watch the fucking scene when Lori is sitting in, and this goes back to the fate thing I mentioned earlier which is what they're really pushing as the tagline for the Halloween 2018 film which at first I didn't like I thought it was kind of cheap but then I remember this scene when she's sitting in the classroom and the teacher's talking about fate and mm -hmm. she's talking about a book or whatever and just the entire entire dialogue there, for me, just really fucking just nails what Michael Myers is supposed to be. I thought you were going to say it really nails the hard decisions that one has deciding Dominoes or Papa John's. Where are we at right now? <sighs> those are both, fate is what you make. Those are both poor choices. you got to go Fucking Terminator 2. Fate is what you make. John Connor. <laughs> Sarah Connor. Yeah, it's like, do I or do I just say fuck fate and go to Little Caesars, get a $5 pizza and have diarrhea for the next two That's days? That's a great choice. I love Little Caesars. And don't you dare say another bad word about it. For me, in a weird, jagged way, that is John Carpenter trying to explain to you what Michael's and Lori's connection is. It's just her fucking fate. This is just the way shit worked out. You don't need to over explain it. Michael is an unstoppable force, much like fate is itself. I shouldn't have said yes at the altar. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That was uh, your fate, that, my that's dear. Awesome. I want to go to a dark place. Linda and Bob end up parked outside of the house in Bob's party van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're it's drinking nice beers. And, and she's babysitting uh, Lindsay. No, and, she and wasn't, baby. No, that was she was she, wasn't. she was supposed to be. That's what yeah. the plan was. So he's like, so she's like, uh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Lindsay is gone for the night. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, but before that, when they're in the van, he goes, he goes, 
First we'll, we'll first we'll rip off Annie's clothes, and then I'll rip off Lindsay's clothes. And like, and I was like, and I never like. I, and then all of a sudden, missing something. And then all of a sudden, Chris Hansen banks on, banks right? on the fucking Did door. Is like, I'm that? Chris Hansen, and I'm with Dateline. And then and then and then uh, PJ Souls is like, totally. I was like, Did you all just plan to fucking? I don't. I'm very. And confused. And then eight millimeter three. I, I, that's never been. Uh, that no was, one's ever mentioned, so I must be wrong. I must have my well, timelines he, confused. He was he was obviously well. He was probably just being a fucking <laughs> asshole and drunk and and saying. Something that he thought was funny and maybe the, the her it was funny. I don't know. It was just a shitty joke. Yeah. Uh, Real I don't think. Joke, I don't. Bob. Obviously, I don't think he meant it. But is I that mean, what gets your ghost, Bob? Uh, you ghost sick fuck. Busters. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so they they wind up getting home or you know in this house they're gonna have some nice fuckery and they do have some nice fuckery. I guess she's way too loud and uh, she's spe like I like a little bit of loudness, but the entire time he's like she's like oh he's like I just touched your shoulder. I need to have the gratification <laughs> myself. I want them to act like I did good. So <laughs> thank so you. For the top, though. The whole I love the loudness. Like, mm, ah, kiss a little meat today. <laughs> Spread out chili pepper song. We're trying to have sex. So, Bob's my favorite death scene. Bob, yeah, the Bob death scene when Michael comes out, picks his ass up, fucking stabs him, and then lifts him, and then goes like, "You got a small dick." <laughs> uh, and but he does the classic, you know, head turn for the first time. Several times too. And like, like, he's like back and forth. I think he was looking at. I think he was looking at his glasses. He's like, are those lens crafter? Because I really need some right now. Are you wearing like I don't know? Is that your style? <laughs> it's like uh, it's like when you're trying to get your your beard trimmed the right way. You're like, fuck it. It's it's, it's all it's, it's uneven it. here no. or is it there? No. Uh, yeah, but it was that a great fucking scene. And I don't know if that was ad lib by Nick Castle. I think a lot. I think somebody said that he just started doing it or he did it in the scene and it looked great. So they were like, keep that shit in. I'm not sure. So that would be something to maybe ask Nick Castle or John Carpenter one day if you ever got a chance to. Uh, but moving on from there, then it's where it gets a little weird. Like Michael Myers has already didn't give a fuck about how he looked. Like he had a mask on. He did care about that. He wanted a mask. But other than that, then he wants to go full on, like I don't know, Inspector Gadget and put on a, a costume to fool somebody. Like you don't need. She's not gonna go anywhere. She's butt naked. She's <laughs> in like, the bed. When do you get a load of me? You don't have to do anything. Yeah, he's like <laughs> giant bat terrorizes Gotham. Uh, yeah, but this so, town needs an animal. So he like puts on the the spooky ookie and he, he puts on a bed sheet and, and wears Bob's glasses. He's like, ooh, <laughs> and he opens the door and, and she's like, Gillette, the best a man can get. It is the best. The man can get. I just want people to know. Uh, but you know, he sat in the doorway in his ghost costume, his fucking Casper reject costume, and she sat there like she's like, see anything you like? And you know, he was like, yeah. And then he's like, no. He's like, I, I see her piece in a bad future. No, no, no. It's like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> chlamydia. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, yeah, he's like, I see a bad future. A couple kids smoking habit, dying at fifty eight. No. And then she's like, fine, whatever. And then the phone rings, and then it's Lori talking to her, asking her about has she heard from so-and-so or whatever. I have to mention really <coughs> quick, though, that we re-edited that scene to match Taylor Swift's Look What You Made Me Do, and uh, it's on our Instagram, so please go find that video. It's fucking hilarious, and I'm really proud of it. It was a good, it was a good one. But, uh, <laughs> and then Michael, Michael, uh, as she's talking, and she never noticed it, Michael sneaks up real, like, he's like, <laughs> and the sheet falls away, and he's like, do this it. <laughs> do this it. And she's not like looking. Like she's stuff. not looking at him. She's like, do you like the goods? And then she, he's like, oh, fucking bitch, you don't pay attention to me. <laughs> well, your fucking phone call is done. And he takes the cord, he's like, like, and he starts like choking her ass, and then, you know, but here's the thing. Every time we try to, we, time we try to hang out, you're on your fucking phone. Well, here's the thing about PJ Souls. PJ Souls actually said that Nick Castle was such a super nice guy that when she was doing that scene that he wouldn't actually do it. Like he would, he'd be like, uh. and he was, she was like, no, really fucking choke me. I was like, damn, oh. man. damn, damn dog. I didn't know you like to get wet. <laughs> and he was like, okay, well, fuck you. He's like, I should have been, I should have been the best around. Nothing's ever going to keep me down. So he goes full on like, like a rock and starts strangling her and it's a great scene and after he, after she dies it, it's a good scene uh, he picks up the phone and then Lori's like hello hello and he's like <sighs> like it's like he wants to say something you I think, gonna pay my minutes I think that deep I, down, I think deep down inside he was like Verizon or Sprint <laughs> but yeah it, it was it was a cool scene the way he picks up the phone and holds it to his ear yeah that was awesome then you cut to him actually getting rid of the bodies well you got your first arts and crafts scene in that in the midst of all that's mm. going on too because he's got Annie he lays Annie out on the bed he puts the gravestone uh, of uh, 
Judith. Judith on the, on the edge of the bed. Which, by the way, we, we we didn't mention the awesome scene where Loomis goes to the to the gravesite. He's like, yeah, it's like plot A twenty four. He's like, you know, there was this one guy, and he went to get a. He was he was having biscuits and he went to get an axe and then he came back and was like, Will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> it's like I'm on important business right now. It's like when you're late to go on somewhere and someone's like, I like your shirt. You're like, give me your fucking biscuits. I like when he's like that guy was like, God damn kids, why do they do it? He's like, what do you mean? They do this every year? That's fucking weird. You have a weird town. And also, uh, by the way, we didn't mention this about Loomis. Um, there's so much to cover. I mean, we could be here for three hours just talking about this movie, but also, when Dr. Loomis, when they go and find his house, they find that dead dog half eaten. And that's mm. the first time that you find out Michael Myers enjoys the canine flavor extra crispy because the, 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 uh, they got hungry. The sheriff is like, Yeah, he's like, God, what? It's just full, full fresh. He's like, He got hungry. It's like, maybe it was a record. But it wasn't even like, it's like, Dr. Loomis, did you know this shit before? Like, th was this in a file somewhere? Like, did he eat a dog on premises? Like, how the fuck, like, would you think that he ate this dog? He's like, he got hungry. What do you want? <laughs> and then you have the, uh, you also have the classic, you know, I met the six-year-old child, the black, you know, blank, pale, black, Amazing, emotional. That's so good. Oscar. And then he, and I also like the, the, the sheriff is like, you sound serious. Like, I am. I am scared. <laughs> I love that scene. You should be too. Uh, but yeah, it was it was you so must well think done. You're so silly. <laughs> it was so well done, and, and then um, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like I don't want to ignore how great Donald Pleasance was Fuck in no, this man. movie. He Without him, it. he is very uh, you know. Jamie Lee Curtis is the antithesis to Michael Myers, but. And, and some people would consider her the Van Helsing, but I always consider Dr. Loomis the Van Helsing. He's the guy that ultimately knows what monster he's hunting and no one's really believing him. It's like a guy shouting vampires are alive and well and they're real and no one listening to you and he's the only one that's got the goods to put it down and no one. So he is, to me, the, the true Van Helsing and, and the unsung hero of the movie. Just, dude, you've got, in the midst of this, you've got like all this stuff going on and it's a slow burn movie, yeah, and, and it's creepy and like all this shit's happening, but all of a sudden, you they just, jump out of that for a second and they focus on this fascinating fucking character throwing out amazing dialogue and he's an acting fucking god you know like it's it's such a fascinating it, like it, it just adds a, a level to this movie that's that's insane that you can never you know you can't put a number on that shit you know it Loomis just adds a layer to this movie that just makes it really 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 fucking special to a movie that already was special for the scariness for the uh heroin for all the shit going on it's it's right. it's it's fucking it's, he it's adds really the, uh, what puts it over the top the gravitas yeah he adds the anchor to the bed and this is when it really gets in because Lori notices what's going on she finally fucking sees him she sees her dead friends and this is where the fucking end piece happens the classic fucking shit has hit the goddamn ceiling. You got the classic scene of her running, which is probably the most thrilling moment in the movie, I would say, right? Not like scary, but like the most thrilling moment in the movie is when she's running from one house to the other and he's just fucking walking behind her because he's fucking weird and he's like, I'm too cool to fucking run. Yeah. You know, and she's banging on the door for the kids to let her in and the, and the house where the final sequence takes place. That's the first uh, uh, injury, you know, of it all was the knitting needle. And it goes in his neck and he, he lays it on the floor and it, it it's probably just stuns him and he's laying there thinking if he is thinking at all he's like am i dying do i die and he's like he gets up he's like no i still want to kill that bitch you know yeah. and he goes upstairs and then he gets the fucking the, hanger, the hanger yeah. in the eye and then finally gets stabbed and she thinks when she goes up and she sits there she's like okay it's fucking it's happened now like i'm but she was really dumb she kept throwing the fucking weapon right for all the things you say about Lori strode she was pretty dumb in these moments she kept throwing the weapon right fucking next to him when she was done with it yeah uh, and then Michael's like, I'm gonna use this and fucking, you, how dare you fucking stab me in the eyeball that I used to, like, bird watch. Now I show you to So he rises up, and it's a great scene as you watch, you know, she's crying in the corner after she tells Tommy and Lindsay to run away or whatever. She's crying in the corner of the door, and then Michael, like, rises up from the grave, as you would if you're late for work. You just fucking, you have to do what you gotta do. He rises up, and he looks at himself, why are you fucking relaxing? You think I'm dead, dog? You think I died? <laughs> when and your then, beat comes on in the club. And then she, like, he, no, that's, yeah, that's like the second <laughs> win you get when you're too drunk, and you're like, no. And then someone's like, drink this. You're like, yes. And then you come up and then he's like oh you fucking think you're uh, dude and then he's all blurry and he stands up in the background and the camera's focused on her in the forefront and she's like all clear but you see it you see him rise up and he starts walking and he's like watching so what are you gonna do what are you gonna do and then she starts walking he's like nope and then he grabs his uh, and you can actually hear his like he's he's real pissed off and uh that's the first time you see Michael Myers without a mask on. Um, she lifts the mask yeah. off, and he looks weird as shit. He looks like a mannequin that you got at Kmart before they went out of sale, because he's like, 
And he's like, it's weird. And then Loomis at this point is running up the stairs after hearing Tommy and Lindsay run out of the front of the house screaming, help me. And he runs in there and he sees, takes out the uh, revolver and shoots his ass. I've like, been trying to find that Pokemon for months. But I'll know, uh, you want to, uh, when Michael pulls the, the mask back on, it's all stretched out and he pulls it back on. When after Dr. Loomis shoots him and he runs into the room after him to see, shoot him some more, it's a perfect mask. So after he got shot, Michael went, Suck it back in. <laughs> yeah, the it. collar. And that's what and the guy now I'm in ready. Halloween 5 should have been doing all the fuck along. He just didn't have the attention to detail. So just let that shit fucking hanging out. Loomis unloads with a poppy gun into his ass and he falls off the uh, ledge of the house and is dead on the ground from what you think. And then Lori's sitting there and is like, well, that's the boogie man. And he's like, as a matter of fact, it was. Uh, I, what else are you supposed to say? He's like, no, god damn it. It was just a fucking escape mental patient with a mask on. What are you, fucking high? <laughs> he's like, he leads over. Oh, he gone. <laughs> but that was, but, the, but when he runs over to do the, to check out his handiwork with that shot where it was shooting him and he's gone and then that music starts kicking on that bum, 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 bum. And then you see Dr. Loomis look up and look around with this kind of shocked, you know, look in his face. Amazing scene. Like that is so, and then you see Lori start crying in the corner. Oh, fuck it, and then you hear, and then as the camera co goes back to each place that he was, like each part where the murders happen, and then you hear the breathing at the very end of the movie. It's insane, man. I think that you didn't even have to show the grassy knoll with his <laughs> fucking, because in two, like it's a full on Kool Aid Man imprint, you know? Yeah. But like you didn't even have to show that because, like, when you hear, like, when they're just showing the shots of the, of the house and like the, the different uh, shooting spots, and you hear him breathing, it's like that motherfucker's still alive. He's here forever. I'm forever. And, and, and again, like, one of the, the only things we didn't mention was the amazing lighting when his face pops great. up behind her in that one scene. That was fucking that, that, that scary was, as shit. That was what I was going to say. I think that besides the head cocking, that's my favorite scene of the movie. We, how, how they just z gently brighten up just a bit and you see the mask become more and more apparent as it comes out of the closet space or whatever or the doorway. That looks fucking sick as hell and it's amazing. I just wish, dude, I wish. And then he, even him so walking down the steps towards her after yeah. she falls off and he's like, it looks, but he is kind of running, walking like you really got to poop but you don't know, like you got to get down the steps. Or somebody just yelled, uh, th uh, turkey's done at Thanksgiving. You're like, yes. It, it's a 10. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it's not the scariest movie of all time. For me, that title still has to go to The Exorcist. Mm. I, I just can't deny Fuck that in my that heart shit. of hearts. It may be the best horror movie of all time. Fucking Halloween, man. It's insane. So, yeah, it's one of the and greatest films of all time. And I will also tell you, at the end, uh, if you'll notice throughout the entire thing, there's not an overuse of graphic violence or blood. I mean, there's violence, true. But they don't need to have, like, a ton of fucking gore or whatever to tell their story. It's very simply done. And the reason why it's so compelling and the reason why it lives on and why people remember it so fondly is because the story is so well done and it's so fleshed out and the characters are so memorable that... It, it just hooks you. There's something special about that. And it also goes to show you that you can have a horror movie with a great story. It doesn't always have to be, you know, Rob Zombie being, fuck, fuck, I love and I hate women at the same time. I will chop one tit off and I'll keep the other one on for my kid that I'm going to fuck you with. Okay? Fleshlight. You know, whatever. I'm going to go kick a dog in the face. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like that. But anyway, just it, it, it will forever be... A legendary movie for a good reason. Put her in no last. That's Halloween. That's our review for it, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. We're doing all the Halloween reviews leading up to uh, October 19th. And um, and we've got tons of other shit planned for you this month. Right? Like we said, it's going to be a fucking Halloween-fueled son of a bitch extravaganza. Put your party hats on. Bring the prophylactics. And uh, let's have fun together into the night. So if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some god damn wham up in you. We love your fucking faces. I did that backwards, but I'm not doing it again, because I don't give a shit. I've been trick or treated to death tonight. You don't know what death is, you piece of shit? We watched a movie. Uh -huh. mm. We watched a movie.